Hi everybody. This is a Claiborne LSAT logic game setup video. I'm Clay, the director of LSAT prep at Claiborne Education. And we're gonna go back to prep test seven today and look at the first game in there. So you'll wanna have that in front of you. We respect LSAC's copyright. So I'm not gonna be reading out the whole game to you, but we can begin to think about the setup together. And we will notice that this is a sequencing game and we're gonna need seven slots on this particular game because we've got the, the six lettered players and the news tape in this case. So we'll want to set that up. We'll note that this is a strict sequencing game and the dead giveaway that that's the case is the very first rule. The best possible kind of rule we often say on an LSAT logic game is a block and we get that right away when, when we learn that L and then O must go immediately next to each other. All right, let me put this in here that this is up test seven and number one. All right, so now we're ready to think through how we approach it. And we always do the same thing with a block, right? We move it all the way across from left to right. That's a nice systematic, repeatable way that helps us make sure we're not missing any possibilities. So L and then O is going to go first off one and two. We always need to watch out for other rules that might include L and O, but the only other one that does says that the news tape must be after L. So we're okay there. We're gonna start out with L and O in number one. Now note that this is probably not gonna be a high yield kind of logic game where we learn everything or nearly everything before we even begin the questions. We can tell that because there's not a ton of information in the rules. There's only three rules. One of them is a loose sequencing rule that the news tape is after L. But this last rule is interesting. The GP separated by exactly two slots. Now you wanna be really careful that you've got that right first. We don't wanna miscount or misinterpret exactly as at least or anything like that. It also indicates that we don't know which order they're in. So we have one of these two arrangements going on. Well, that's really functions like a block. That's super helpful because there's only so many ways that we can see that sort of relationship. So let's go ahead and posit those ways. We could have G and P and three or six in some order. So I'm gonna add kind of a long handle there. Could go either way. And then we could also move them to four or seven if L and O are one and two. Now notice that we have a couple of floaters on this game. Some people call them free agents. They're players or elements that have no rules about them. We don't learn anything in the rules about H and we don't learn anything in the rules about S. So those are going to float completely. And with respect to the news tape, since it's just after L, it's really floating completely in this case too. So what I like to do in this case is just write the remaining ones out to the side, just reminding yourself that in those remaining three spaces, H, N, or S is going to have to go there. We don't know in what order. And the same thing is going to be true when we move to the next game board, L and O number one and two, G and P four and seven in some order. Once again, we don't know where H, N, and S will go. I'm just gonna draw a down arrow there because that applies on the second game board as well. All right, now that's all the ways that L and O can be one and two. And you might think, well, that's gonna be a ton of possibilities because we still have to do two, three and three, four and four, five and five, six, and actually not six, seven for reasons we'll see in a moment. But we may also find that possibilities narrow down as we go. So let's just see. When we start to move L, O over, there's now a couple of different ways in kind of a different configuration that G and P can play out. In this case, they could actually be one and four. Well, if that's the case, then once again, H, N, and S are completely interchangeable. I'm gonna come back and erase this part of the arrow and draw it down even further because H, N, and S could go any way we need N to be after L and it will be. But what about if we 
put G and P in the only other relationship they could have or, or placement, that is four and seven in some order, that's a little bit more limited because we now know that N has to be after L, which rules it out from being in the first position. So I'm gonna go ahead and say first position is, is either H or S. It's a good principle to always write something positively if you can, rather than negatively. That is to say, don't put not N there, put H or S definitely has to be there. And then the remaining ones would be S or H. We'll put that in reverse order to indicate it's the other one of S or H and then N. And they also could be in either order. All right, so that's game board number four. We are gonna get a lot of game boards here, but it's worth playing it out to see what happens. Let's continue with L and O. And this is going to be helpful because now there's only one way that G and P can be separated by two. They're gonna to have to kind of snuggle right around L and O there, right at the edges. So G and P are interchangeable in that order. Once again, we need N after L, that'll be a recurring theme. So we'll say that H and S, H or S I should say has to be first and then either the other one of H or S or N is six and then seventh. Now notice there that as we moved L and O to three and four, there was only one fundamental possibility there. We're already ready to move the L O block again as we move forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna find with this configuration that once again, just like last time, G and P can only fit snugly around L and O. There's no other way to get them in and have them separated by exactly two spaces. This is fancier, it's nicer because N is now forced into spot number seven. The floaters H and S fall in some order in the remaining two spaces. And the last place we can put L and O is spots five and six, because again, the news tape has to be after L. So it has to be in number seven. And that means G and P can only go in spots one and four in some order, which then yields a scenario in which H and S, the floaters are in the last two spots in some order. And that is possibility number seven. So notice what happened there. It looked like we were going to need a lot of game boards to detail what happens here. And I generally say that when you're thinking like, well, how many game boards is too many, too many for the upfront setup? I'd say double digits is usually too many. If you think you're gonna to get to 10 or more, you might wanna cut bait at that point and just go on to the questions, work out the conditional questions and generate more research from doing them. But notice here that things often narrow down as you go. We had two options for LO being one and two, two options for L and O being two and three. But as we move the LO block across, the possibilities narrowed. And we actually only ended up with seven possibilities. And you might say sarcastically, well, only seven? That feels like a lot. But it's not a lot when you realize that these seven possibilities are giving you an almost complete mastery of the details. As you go into the questions, there are relatively few gaps to fill. These gaps on game boards one and two, and then you know, kind of resolving where the slashes and the handles, how they might lock in. You can always discover that with a little bit more diagramming, particularly on the conditional or if questions, but you're in great shape. Maybe not a high yield situation, but what I would call a medium yield situation you're in excellent shape to go into the questions with a massive amount of knowledge of what's to come. This is the powerful decision tree thought process applied to logic games to get these advanced game boards and then play them out over the course of the questions. So definitely check out our other logic games videos to see more of these uh, examples and, and more of the decision tree process put into play. And come talk to us if you want to learn more about preparing for the LSAT.